What is up and welcome back everybody to another episode of CSK News. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's great stories. All of those stories will be time marked down below for your convenience. And the first of which I want to talk about is the community actually responding to the crouch jump bug, which going forward will no longer be used in the PGL Major. Now we can only hope for this as all teams, including Team Big, met not just once, but actually twice last night, allegedly because Team Big didn't know about the first meeting. They actually met again to actually discuss the crouch jump bug and not using it going forward. So it seems uh, with all the player tweets out there that we have, including Simple and other teams out there tweeting this kind of stuff out. It seems all teams, including Team Big, have agreed from this day out, day three and onward, to no longer use the crouch jump bug. Now, we don't know if this means not use it altogether or just not use it abusively, but hopefully it's not going to be used altogether. Now, why this actually started, for all of you guys who are curious of the background, we actually had on day one Team Big, who has now won twice on Inferno. They first beat FaZe Clan 16-8 to on day one. Now, again, we could say it wasn't exclusively because they used the crouch jump bug. It was still a blowout game, but they did use the crouch jump bug quite a few times and it was also coincidentally just yesterday on day two they also played cloud nine on inferno another blowout match there with a not too close of a score line but they also used that crouch jump bug in multiple ways not only on b site towards banana but also uh, on a site towards library as well they know their way to use the crouch jump bug but i would say i wouldn't actually say that was the only reason why they won those games both those games not too close in score lines but that's kind of the debate of the of the major right now is why team big is having to use these crouch jump bugs even if they're still winning by you know seven or eight rounds on average so far. Now moving on as well, we did have several people speculating as to whether teams are not actually confronted Team Big in person or were just tweeting at them to actually stop using the bug itself. We had several of the of the actual Team Big members saying, all you players out there are tweeting about us, but you're not coming to us and actually asking us to stop. Now we did have Cloud9 Automatic, he actually said this in-game chat versus them on Inferno just yesterday, but it seemed like an obvious joke because we had so many teams out there. We actually had a Strauss and SK, uh, we had Astralis Kerrigan versus their match in SK. They tweeted out this. And we also had G2 and Gambit tweet out this as well. They made gentlemen's agreements to not abuse the bug. So it seems like Automatic was making a pretty obvious sarcastic joke at that. And allegedly behind the scenes, Cloud9 did ask them to actually not use the bug. And apparently Big did decline that. But we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. But going forward is all that matters, guys. And going forward, it seems that no teams, including Team Big, will be using the crouch jump bug, at least abusively, for the rest of the major. And that's all we can ask for. And also some other CSK news you guys probably did not hear about. I was watching Summit 1G stream all day yesterday and he finally talked about the Josh OG situation actually on and off for about an hour because a YouTube commentator and critic known as Total Biscuit was going off on Josh OG on Twitter. If I can pull up those tweets I will on screen right now guys. He was going off on Josh OG about the incident that happened just over a year ago today. It was actually back in July of 2016 to so just last summer where Josh OG came out with a clip and actually it confessed his equity in the website known as CSGO Lotto. Now many of you guys know about that scamming and that scandal of that website involving T Martin and Syndicate where they were rigging bets and posting YouTube videos as well as streaming on that website which of course is heavily against the law and it definitely should be. Now Summit did a great job defending Josh OG because if you guys remember it was never 100% confirmed for Josh OG that he was actually rigging bets although the main problem that he was doing and the bad thing he was actually doing was he had equity in the website, he was playing on the website and he was not disclosing to people that he was they were actually watching that he was a partial owner and he had equity in the site itself which is against the law. So Summit went on to defend this guy and I think in a really great way the fact is that he never thought that he was rigging bets and he was never confirmed to be rigging bets but he still will be facing legal action and Josh OG will pay the time or pay the dues that he has to pay. So I thought it was kind of a cool story. I'll show those clips right now as to what Summit 1G had to say about Josh OG and the CSGO Lotto scandal. Why would you, why would you uh, support someone who blatantly scammed his fan base? Listen dude, I see things differently. You can see things however you want to, but he's been a friend of mine for a long time, and uh, I don't believe uh, that he did anything wrong, like in the sense of scamming people. I do believe that he did something wrong in the sense of uh, like something against the law, though. You know what I mean? And you know, he he gets what's coming to him. You know, he gets a lot of hate for it. What more do you want to? What do you want to do? Like fucking string him up? Legal action gets taken. He'll get what's coming to him, you know? But he's a good friend of mine. I don't believe what he... I don't think that... I don't believe that he actually he scammed people, you know what I mean? I think he got caught up in a bad situation. Car. Didn't know the law. Nice paying the piper. I mean, dude, I know that... I know that everybody thinks that everybody see. knows every single law, right? In the world and uh, or in the... In the U.S., so I, I, I had no idea there was a law that you shots. had to, like, uh, disclose your sponsors car. and stuff like that, yeah. you know what I mean? We all kind of... Uh, Got a heads up on that one when you. it happened. You know one. Yeah, I, I get that, Chad. I get that. He owned it. I get it. He had a he had a portion. He had an equity in it, right? I, I understand that. But 
And like I said, like he fucked up. I get that. And he's like I said, he's paying the he pays the price for that. He gets a lot of you guys hating on Going him for that. Way. I get it. You know what I'm saying? But do like I think he's like a ass. fucking criminal in the sense that he was doing what Loose Phantom Lord was doing? No, I don't think he was doing that. Oh, yeah. And then very quickly, if you guys don't remember, here is Josh OG's apology where he came out to all of his fans and admitted his equity in the website. And I, I thought it was pretty sincere and pretty touching. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Do you guys think Josh OG is as guilty as T Martin and Syndicate were? It seems like Syndicate's escaped all hate and it now kind of all lies on T Martin. Am I own personal opinion it seems like everyone has now framed t martin as the main victim then it goes syndicate and then josh og i really kind of forgot he was actually involved in the first place he seems like a, a really genuine guy and it's if i misled any of you guys or if any of you guys are upset at what transpired i am so we sorry and you know you guys we, we've been been. here for two and a half years been doing this every single day for like what i I, I've been streaming for like 12 hours every single day. I wouldn't do it if I didn't love it. And I wouldn't do it if I didn't love you guys. And for all the people in the community that know that, I hope you guys stick around. And if you guys are going to leave the community, you know, I hope I can win you back. And also talking about big investments for big North American teams out there, it seems like Team Liquid has now drawn a new investor from Disney Channel. That is, it's so weird to say this because, you know, I've, I've watched Disney Channel all throughout my childhood. Many of you guys probably watched Disney Channel as well. It seems Disney has now brought Team Liquid under their wing as a part of their accelerator program. That means Disney is actually investing some money into Liquid and they're also going to try and teach them professionally in the future and hopefully have some kind of business in the future as well. So Disney has now taken Liquid under their wings. This becomes a second big organization to actually take Liquid under their wing and under their name as well because Team Liquid is also involved with Magic Johnson, the owner of the Golden State Warriors. So Team Liquid doing a very good job. We'll see what comes out of this and Disney is also involved heavily in other esports as well, other sectors, but they have chosen Team Liquid for their CSGO portion. Of course, Team Liquid offering other teams out there, League of Legends, uh, other other esports as well. So a great pickup by Disney and probably an even better pickup by Team Liquid as they now seek investment from Disney. And I have not talked about a roster change in a long time on this channel. I feel like this past week has been all about kind of like drama stories. So I hopefully will be back to roster changes. It does seem NIP or former NIP Pith will actually be replacing Snyder on Godsense roster as a stand-in role for DreamHack Atlanta. Many of you guys remember Pith was actually replaced on the NIP roster about five months ago by Draken. Draken ever since has also been joined up by his teammate, his former Epsilon teammate Rez on the NIP roster. So Pith will now be going to Godsent for a stand-in role for Snyder. Apparently Snyder actually had a vacation time planned for that DreamHack Atlanta date. So for DreamHack Atlanta guys, good, good to see Pith back in the competitive scene for NIP wearing that NIP jersey. Now off of that, I do want to talk about a story I talked about yesterday. I'm sorry guys, I don't know. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about this story as well. Maybe this is an all-time high or an all-time low for gambling sites out there who are now allegedly, according to the screenshot on screen, thanks to the guy who actually tweeted me this and apparently a lot of people out there after I covered this yesterday told me that this is happening for a long time. It's actually been happening for quite some time uh, with gambling sites offering you free skins just to go to their website and deposit the skins itself. Now it seems as well, not all of them are scams. I know one of them yesterday, I think the name of the website was esportsinc.com. I could be wrong about that, so don't trust me guys. But someone DM'd me on Twitter and said, Jake, it's not a scam. I deposited, I won, and I didn't have to deposit more to withdraw. So congrats to you, man. Gambling sites are now a brand new marketing strategy, and it's very, very front and forward. They just offer you skins, Gamble them on their website if you guys want to. So I guess if you if you get this offer, accept it, free skins. Now also, for our last story of today's episode of CSK News, I do want to talk about this. It's the first time in a long time we've waited till day three of the major. Today is day three going on right now, and we had our first cobblestone matchup going on. It was actually crazy to see between Mouse Sports and North. Those were our first two teams to actually decide or for it to come down to a random selection of cobblestone. Now, we actually had last major cobblestone was the number one most played map of the group stages, and it is now the last last played map of this major. So watch out guys, those cobblestone package prices might go up, they might go down, we'll see what happens. And that's gonna do it for today's episode of CSK News. Hope you guys all enjoyed. It's the first episode since like, I don't know, last week that we've actually had no drama, no mojo, no McSkillet. I do apologize for that guys. I messed up a few things in yesterday's video. You guys can tell when it comes to the whole gambling scene, I have very little information or I've, I know very little when it comes down to like the seeds, the hash codes, the nonces. I couldn't even pronounce provably fair correctly. Uh, it's a lot of mistakes. So thank you guys for sticking with me through that. I hope you guys all enjoyed today's drama-free episode. If you guys did, leave a comment down below. I'll be replying to several comments as as many as I can today. So hope you guys all enjoyed. Live, love, laugh, lot. My name is Jake. Remember, I like you. I will see you all tomorrow or in a couple days. Goodbye.